All right, family, I'm back in the flesh. All right, today is misgiving, you know, turkey day. I call it misgiving. You already know what it is. Misgiving had nothing to do with black people. So, but uh, that's not the reason why I celebrate misgiving. You know, it's just a damn holiday when you eat food, but it's not because of that. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, Thanksgiving had nothing to do with black people whatsoever. Just do your history on that. I've done videos about misgiving before. And stuff like that. But anyway, that's besides the point, man. This is about um, Clockwork Orange being the pathological liar that he is, being the face of white supremacy that he is, being the the poster child for white identity extremists, um, continues to make media headlines, continues to go on Twitter rants, I mean, this dude starts more Twitter beef than rappers, like I said before, man. This dude is just in his 70s on Twitter like crazy. I mean, goodness gracious. How do you do that? Dude is on Twitter more than me. It's crazy. And, and you know, you're the so-called president of the United States that possibly will be impeached. But again, you know, we live in a system of racism, white supremacy. So once you replace one white supremacist, another will step in and take over. Until we replace this broken system of injustice with a system of justice, point blank and simple. You already know what it is. But, you know, Clockwork Orange had a Twitter rant last night. Continues to bring up LeVar Ball's name. Again, how do you take this guy seriously? You can't. You can't trust anything he says or does. He's a pathological liar. That's what he is. Number 45, Clockwork Orange is a pathological liar. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to point out this article I saw from, uh, or this, this tweet I saw from uh, Judd Lagoon, who quotes um, a local Chinese official out in China um, about theft in China and stuff like that. I'm going to point this article. Let me switch my, my screen so you guys can see what I'm looking at. So it says here, um, President Trump was suggested that he save three American college basketball players who have been detained in China for shoplifting from prison terms as long as a decade. But experts say that players for the UCLA team were accused of stealing sunglasses from a Louis Vuitton store in Hangzhou, China. Probably would have been released even if Trump had not raised the case where President uh, Jinping during the visit this month to Beijing shoplifting is considered a relatively minor crime in China and foreigners convicted of minor crimes are often deported rather than given prison sentences quote it's nonsense Fu Hoiling a law professor at the University of Hong Kong said of Mr. Trump's assertion that his intervention was solely responsible for athletes' release. I would be surprised if they were even prosecuted. That's the dagger right there. Pretty much proves that Clockwork Orange is a pathological liar, will continue to be a goddamn liar. That's what he is. And I was at the barbershop the other day. We, we had a conversation about, uh, you know, Trump and... and him taking credit for, and I always, you know, I've always uh, agreed with LeVar. I said, well, where's the proof, right? And they were like, oh, well, he met with the the, the president uh, of China, and within a couple hours, the boys were released. And I brought up the point, like I said in my last video, I said, number one, there's three UCLA students who got arrested, all right? If someone's last name wasn't Ball, those boys would still be there. Clockwork Orange, Clockwork Orange knows who LeVar Ball is in the Ball family. Like I said, LeVar Ball is a household name. I don't understand why people are saying he's not. Because again, if his last name, if LeAngelo's last name was in Ball, those boys would still be there. Why is Clockwork Orange single-handedly, singling out rather, singling out one parent 
out of the three boys, out of the three young men, rather, I should say, three young men from UCLA, why is he singling out one parent out of the three UCLA students for a thank you? Why isn't he going after the other two players' parents for a thank you? Why? It's simple. He knows who LeVar Ball is. He knows who the Ball family is. He knows who Big Baller Brand is. And he saw that as an opportunity to make media headlines. He is a narcissist. He is a misogynist, a white supremacist, the leader in the face of white identity extremists. He's all that and a bag of chips. I haven't said that in a while, but that's what he is. A pathological liar. How can you guys take this guy seriously? You can't. You can't. He's a joke. Then he goes on Twitter and compares LeVar Ball to Don King. I mean, really. Here's, I mean, this is this is on his Twitter right here. I mean, <laughs> this is what he said. It wasn't the White House. It wasn't the State Department. It wasn't Father LeVar's so-called people on the ground in China that got his son out of long-term prison sentence. It was me. Too bad. LeVar should support man's version of Don King, but without the hair. Just think. I mean, really, really, uh, he goes on again, LeVar, you could have spent the next five to 10 years during Thanksgiving with your son in China, but no NBA contract to support you. But remember, LeVar, shoplifting is not a little thing. It's a really big thing, especially in China. Ungrateful fool. Another pathological liar statement. A Chinese lawyer just said. Quote, and I read it again. It's nonsense. Fu Hoiling, a law professor at the University of Hong Kong, said Mr. Trump's assertion that his intervention was solely responsible for the athlete's release. I will be surprised if they were even prosecuted. It's a minor offense. They don't get five to ten years. I'm just going by what the goddamn white supremacist mainstream media is saying, but you got to do your own research and connect the dots. Right? Shop, uh, uh, theft and shoplifting petty crime is a minor offense. So no, they wouldn't have been there, no, they wouldn't have been there for no damn ten years. I mean, they probably would still be there, but it would be no damn five to ten years. You know what I'm saying? Comment down below if you actually know about the local Chinese government and exactly what would be the sentence for stealing some goddamn candy or sunglasses or whatever. Would they be, in, you know, prosecuted or or or? or well, the guy say you will be prosecuted. Will will they get some kind of punishment? And what is the punishment? What is the stipulation? You know what I'm saying? Um. So again, like I like I said, how do you take this guy's how do you take this guy's word seriously? How do you take this guy's word seriously? You can't because, like I had mentioned before about the story of the. Uh, the soldier who lost his life from Miami Gardens, Le David Johnson, and comes to find out now because he had a closed casket and the and the widow was not able to see his body. Uh, his body wasn't even properly identified, so therefore the wrong body was shipped and buried, and they now they're finding remains of his body, and and bringing it back to uh to Florida, and and. Clockwork Orange, again, like I said before in my last video, when I talk about Clockwork Orange, disrespected uh, Le David Johnson's family and Frederica Wilson. Talking about Le David knew what he signed up for. And I believe he said that. How do you take this guy's word seriously? Who goes on Twitter rants? Compares LeVar Ball to Don King, right? Who... <laughs> I mean, it, who the Clockwork Orange administration has to downplay certain tweets that he does. I talked about this tweet. I talked about this before where he, they were talking about uh, when when Trump was talking about the players, the UCLA players, he should have left them in China. His administration said, no, nah, no, nah, he wasn't serious. So now we got to take certain tweets 
as not being serious. We have to second guess things that he tweets about. Really. So, again, I just wanted to point this out, family. You know, Clockwork Orange is a pathological liar. The leader in the face of white supremacy. The leader in the face of white identity extremists. Um, he's an attention whore. He's a narcissist. A misogynist. He's all those things. He's something that the white, his white supremacist base loves. Still going after the slave NFL players for not kneeling. I mean, you got so much things going on in Puerto Rico. People over there are still being transported, you know, to the States. They got no power. Haiti is still in disarray. You don't tweet about those things, but you want to tweet about, continue to tweet about LeVar Ball because you know who he is. He's a household name. And you want him to continue to make headlines. Meanwhile, LeVar Ball's advertising dollars went up over $13 million in the past seven days because you continue to have Twitter beef with LeVar Ball. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad he didn't say thank you. I don't know why some of these dudes are coming out saying, well, LeVar needs to say thank you. No, he does not. You don't know what he did. No, thank you. <laughs> Straight up. No, thank you. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. A 70, a 70 year old, a 70 plus year old guy on Twitter doing Twitter beefs. <laughs> you know, that is the leader of white supremacy. That is the face of white identity extremist clockwork orange, AKA Donald Trump. You already know what it is, man. Anyway, family, those are my thoughts on that. Leave your comments down below in the comment section. Uh, yeah, today is misgiving. So enjoy time with your family. Enjoy time this weekend and all that good stuff. All right. So until next time, Chauncey, a.k.a. the Black Serpentist, signing out. Peace. <laughs>